and you'll get better information on the embryology of the testes, but that is just somewhat important. The testes, like the ovary, develop from mesodermal structures in the posterior mesoderm, the wall left in the posterior abdominal wall. And on the number of influences, the testes in this instance will descend and end up into the scrotum. That's the normal situation. Just about when the mesonephric duct, you've heard about what's repeated, you know, disappears. What becomes attached to the inferior pole there, of both the testes and the ovary, is a fibromuscular component called the gubernaculum. And the gubernaculum will precede the descent of the testis. In fact, it goes to the labia scrotal swelling, which will develop into the scrotum proper and the labia mehola. Also preceding the descent of the testis is a prolongation of the peritoneal lining of the abdominal cavity. I've said it before to you, the so-called processus vaginalis. So I said a number of factors will result therefore in the testicle ended up in the scrotum sac. And naturally what this happens is that the processus will become fibrous, totally obliterated. And that diagram is just representing the fibrous component there. We said the lower part of the processus around by the testicle becomes closely Apply to the testicle, in fact, you can see the testicles in invaginate into the remnant of the processes, and that will give us the tunica vaginalis with its parietal and its visceral layers. I showed in earlier diagrams, last section, that the hibernacular more or less disappears just a vestigial remnant which remains attached to the inferior pole of the testicle and the scrotum and is forming the, the scrotal ligament there. So that in a nutshell is how the events that happen with the descent. And needless to say, with so many events happening in the development of the fetus at that time, several things can go wrong. We said the testicle starts in the posterior abdominal wall, the so called gonal region of the mesoderm, near to the kidneys, posterior abdominal wall. And then it will descend downwards to the posterior lateral, anterior lateral wall, and then finally the anterior abdominal wall to pass into the inguinal canal, which we dealt with. I'm not going to go there too much and get through this deep and superficial inguinal ring and end up into the Scrotal sac. That's the normal event. However, a testis and all newborn kids, you have to examine in obstetric. You know what I mean? to examine and bathe them. That's where we got our paternal instincts from. We have to bathe the, 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 the newborn children. Yes, I know another year you must examine the scrotal sac. Because if it's not down there, then you'll have to inform the patient that things can be done to rectify the situation. So a test that's not in the scrotum is simply referred to as an ectopic test. Ectopic test, okay? Now an ectopic test may be arrested somewhere along its normal pathway. Yes, it might be arrested somewhere along its normal pathway, yes? And that is referred simply to as an undescended testicle. Okay, so an ectopic testicle can be either one, an undescended testicle, one that is arrested somewhere along its normal pathway. Appreciate that? There are many factors. We showed you where the left, and I will show you again that the left testicle is lower than the, the right. The, the reason behind that is that the 
تست کلا اچری اسلام را نسایت و تو ریکال دی از وی دون دت ماست لام و تو گیت می داشی سو وان اد استوری از دا تست کلا اچری اون دی کافیک سایت ریمین شارت و دی زامی دی شارت اری دی سایت اور الان اس پای بات وات دی فاوند دا دات دی ار اب نورمال دی سیس این دی تست کلا اس دا سو وان دا ار اس پای اب نورمال دی سیس اند دی از ان اینکریس این دنس اف مالیگنسی in the undescended testicle. Mm -hmm. Okay? So one ectopic distance may be undescended. Secondly, the undescended testicle may descend three fusion pathway, but having left the superficial inguinal ring, as you can see there, it goes into a number of areas. And that is referred to as man descended testicle. So you understand the difference between an undescended and a maldescended testicle? Mm -hmm. Good. The maldescended testicle is the one that they are more... This is the more common scenario. It comes through the superficial inguinal ring. And the more common side is for it to reverse back anteriorly to the external oblique kappa neurosis. Remember the external oblique of neurosis is forming the anterior layer of the human canal. So it comes through the superficial ring and then turns back uh, to lie on the external oblique of neurosis. That area is referred to as the superficial inguinal pouch. So that's one area. Another area too, it might get into the base of the femoral triangle there. Yes? Sometimes it comes to lie at the root of the penis. That's three. Sometimes it goes over to the other side, somewhere over to the other side. That's four. And the last one, not sure. Sometimes it ends up in the, the perineum. These are the five areas of the malescended testicle. Now, most people I know believe in that the eubinoculum does not play a tremendous part in the descent of the testicle. But an English surgeon by the name of Lockwood in the earlier days, and I like what he said, Mr. Lockwood proposed that there were five components to the eubinoculum. Yes, five components. And one of your early days in physics was to understand vectors, a force, and a direction and the resultant vector of these fire forces is the Lockwood's eubinoculum theory would cause the thing to the test it to end up where it is. If one of these uh, component vectors in the theory is not working, then the test it will end up in one of these bad areas. So that's easy to remember. Lockwood, you know, some of Jamaicans refer to this thing at the last part of Mr. Lockwood's name. <laughs> now, the undescended and ectopic testes, they are the about five keys that's related to it. Being where it is, it's more exposed to trauma. We guys play cricket and things, eh? So you can imagine how we are testing here in the femoral region. That's good. The football, what have you, cricket hit you there, and you collapse on the field. There's more trauma. We mentioned malignancy, there's increased incidence of malignancy, a tumor. The next thing is because it's not so fixed into the scrotum by the scrotal ligament, it's more liable to undergo twisting, so-called torsion. And for you, that's a surgical emergency as young doctors. Young men like these are somewhat adventurous, you know. And some will get sexual transmitted disease, I'm not saying these guys, but young men. And the infection can spread to affect the testicle. So the guy comes to you with pain in the testicle. Yes? But when the torsion uh, you stay in the mechanism later on. When it undergoes torsion, the testicle, the blood supply goes in, eh? like a heart attack. So it's painful. 
And if you don't currently torsion when that patient presents to you and you miss it, the torsion, the testicle will undergo atrophy. Yes? So this is the other T, sterility, infertility. And the last one, mentality. Because it affects the head, you know? When it's not there. So little children, when you become pediatricians, a lot of you girls go into pediatrics. Little child might come, all the way to his as a little infant, whatever, when things are not right, we just cry. Mm -hmm. And the examine in Jamaica, Caribbean area, there's a lot of insect mosquitoes right on the legs. And you examine the femoral region, and you find what you think is a, if he's just like a little snow then. Yes? They give some Panadol and some antibiotics, some cream for the bite, and it's all settled down with time. Only they start to find that way. The scrotum is empty, so please look at it. Because if you miss it, mm. you're going to commission just like what the man is going on. <laughs> Your friends will write to you and say, Hey, HP, you remember looking after Miss Jane's dog's son? And they said, Oh, yes, I remember she did him quite well, all was well. That's what you think. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants some of your life now. Okay? So those are the five things. Trauma, tumor, sterility, infertility. Because some of those areas are warm and it affects the head. And the story is true. <coughs> when I was at a KPH working, there was a 35 year old man coming to me and he came to see what we said was on the second test. And I said to him first, you did know that the ball was not in the scrotum? I knew all along. So I said, you have some 35, what's that? You know, you want us to do something about that. Right. He said, I was the village ram, you know. Somewhere up in Lowry and stuff around here. I was the village ram. You know what I mean by village ram? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look at this face, like, where you guys are that, turning. <laughs> and lo and behold, and lo and behold, one of the more adventurous ladies <coughs> examined the scrotum during the foreplay and discovered the, the lack of the scrotum there. <laughs> and the news spread like one like wildfire. <laughs> that one ball first is not only one ball. <laughs> so natural law of the title. <laughs> and all the girls would keep our problem, you know. So he had to come for a media reaction and we retreated him. I don't know if you're in the crowd. That's Mr. Warnbaugh's person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I showed you last time, I was sent here, where the process of vaginalis was closed off totally, becomes totally fibroid, yeah? But in some instances, it might not become totally fibroid off, yeah? And depending on the, the aperture, the width of the processor that is there, if it's small enough, the bowel cannot come down, as in this situation, yeah? When it's so small that only a little fluid can come down, you get a hydrocele, the very little fluid, when the child cries, will be pushed down into the scrotum, and you get the scrotum swelling. When it stops, the swelling recedes. And we said that was a congenital of hydrocele. When it's big enough, the aperture of the processes, then God can come down. And the child, child will always get, when it's big enough, I think we now heard him, with blood coming down. And I'm going to ask you what type of inguinal hernia therefore children get. That's right, indirect, because the process of this lateral to the inferior gastric yes, action. Okay? So this is a congenital hernia. Or if it was just fluid, then it would be a congenital hydrocele. Sometimes the hernia or the fluid just come to the top of the scrotum, and it's often referred to as an infantile hernia or hydrocele. We mentioned to you that sometimes you might get a little cystic component of the processes remaining, and that then will be the encysted hydrocele of the core, yes? 
And the last type of hydrophilia you must be aware about is when, for some unreason, unknown reason, rarely associated with the tumors and trauma of the testicle, but majority of the time, the fluid accumulates in the tunica vaginal, this, and that is referred to as a vaginal hydrophilia. The fluid looks like urine, straw colored that. And if you shine a flashlight on it and shake it, it shimmers. And uh, a certain parish in Jamaica is now getting a lot of attraction. That oasis of the, the sea, that big ship, 6,000 passengers are coming. Somewhere near in Falmouth. You Jamaicans are familiar. When you're on a moonlight ride in a little boat with your loved one, you must be romantic. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? It's often music is the guys dancing together and the girls either dancing by themselves or looking at me. We didn't like that type of music. You know? We like the love of music, you know? But we want to exercise, we go and run and play football, etc. Yes, you know, in that part of Jamaica, there's an area and there are certain flagellae in the water. And when it, the, the moonlight is on it, it shimmers. And when you move, it fluoresces romantic, you know? And it's called, yeah, drifting in the water. You know, in Jamaica, get your favorite and go on a little boat ride down there. Okay, so this is the vaginal health of tea. And the, why, the reason why the, the fluid is shimmers is because it has a lot of cholesterol crystals in it, huh? Okay. And we showed you, I will show you again that the test is more posteriorly placed in relation to the tunica. So when the fluid accumulates, the, the fluid is on anteriorly and the test is at the back. And this is the reason why we can always slip a needle with a syringe anteriorly and tap the hydrosteel and remove the fluid. Eh? You all appreciate the anatomy and the clinical response there. Okay. I will go back into the area yeah, of the scrotum. But remember, Dr. Thomas mentioned in the histology, when you think about the spermatic cord, remember our three is that? There are the three covering, external, spermatic, and the internal spermatic fascia. And he mentioned within there are three arteries, testicular, the artery of the vas, and the chromatic artery. And he mentioned that there are three nerves. Is that true? And is that true? Good. Andrew is on the ball. That is wrong. There are only two nerves within the spermatic cord. The genital branch of the genital femoral and the sympathetic nerves which you won't see. A third nerve lies between the external spermatic fascia and the chromatic fascia. It enters the canal, not through the deep brain. And that would be the iliacuminal nerve. Okay? So don't be caught out in the exam if I should put that in. Yes, the testicles are the say what? Mm, one, two, three. One, two, three centimeters are so okay. the size. Oh boy. It enters the canal, not through the deep ring, but bypassing between the internal of it and the transversus. So you can naturally have to lie between the chromatic fascia and the external chromatic fascia. Okay? Yes, yeah, it's just because I like a nice, the size of a, a little plum. And as you can see, it's like grayish white, has a grayish white appearance. And slide over it, they are tilted obliquely upwards and outwards. The left being lower than the right. And my suggestion why the testicles are in that line, they are like upwards, outwards and laterally. It's my view that it's just simply the pull of the cremasteric muscles from the superficial ring. You follow me? 
which is the one who's the food of being more lateral because the superficial is somewhere up there and the cremastomus is are coming down. On the surface of this, it's lined of course by the viscerally of the tunica vaginalis and the remaining parietal layer is to the internal spermatic fascia. So there's a little stack with a little tubes of fluid. And the tunica vaginalis, as I said, it is like the testicle has invaginated into it from behind. So the anterior aspect of the testicle is coupled with the parietal layer, rather the literally of the tunica vaginalis. As it does so, it's reflected on to the epididymis. And we can see the epididymis there. It has the so-called head. That's where the efferent ductules from the testicle go into the epididymis by the head. The head is also referred to as a globus major. And from the head or globus major, we have the body of the epididymis. The body is also referred to as the corporal epididymis. And the tail is the corner or globus minor. Not well shown in this diagram is that the upper end by the head, there is an epididial ligament which anchors the epididymis to the testicle and by the tail the anterior ligament. Now, between the epididymis body and the testicle, there is often a little space, yeah? There is often a little space, the so-called sinus of the epididymis, yeah? So the it means a feeler lining will come and there's often a space between the testicle and the body of the epididymis, and which is referred to as the sinus of the epididymis. Where this comes into relevance is in clinical situation. You can imagine you can imagine the testicle being further away from the epididymis, yeah? And in this instance the, the pole of the peritoneum is often referred to as the zonchium. The testicles are often referred to as orchids. Orchids. The testicles are often referred as orchids. And the surgical operation of a removing the testicles as a cancer prostate is called orchidectomy. So, girls, when you marry a fellow doctor, medic male guy, there was a neurosurgeon which I worked with here, and he loved orchids. And the, I'm not sure if the wife he watches it. She bought a, a little, it was his birthday, and he bought a uh, card with the orchid on the front. And then he said, she said to him, Honey, I love your orchids. And I'm sure which one she was replying to. <laughs> you. <laughs> so it's the orchid. Um, so you see where the term Nizorchia so comes into play? Nerdy. Yeah? The Nizorchia, you understand? When it becomes significantly displaced, separated, there's a longer reflection of the parietal and the maturity of the tunica vaginalis from the testicle to the epididymis. Appreciate that? Mm -hmm. So you have a, a well defined Nizorchia. Why about any of that? In real life now, in those situations, the epididymis, the head and the tail are not too well attached to the testicle. And when that happens, the testicle now can undergo twisting inside torsion. And the blood supply will come up with a go and that. And that surgical emergency, you'll have to correct that. Otherwise, you will be able to the consequences. In good countries, if you have facilities with the color doppler and CT studies to be quickly obtained, you can do studies and you can see where in epidemiochitis there is an increased flow, yeah? Whereas when the thing is twisted off, there is no flow, this is a testicle, yeah? <coughs> and so you have to work rapidly to correct the the testicle. You are ready for hours to do this thing. Those of you are working in other islands or other countries in which you do not have this facility readily available, 
you have to prove to yourself for yourself first and petition that it's a second that he does not have a function and you have to do an emergency operation explore the testicle you know what I mean? if it's torsion your current kidney warm it up and if it's surviving it's fine yeah, and then you fix the producing suture so that it will not undergo torsion so you can understand the science of epididymis if it's long enough you have a mesochium and that situation is more prone to undergo torsion yeah?